Let us pray. So freely, Lord God, the seed of your word over the world may fall in good soil in us and may be heard wherever your people live. May I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know how you felt this morning when you heard the three uh, lessons read to you. It felt to me when I came across the readings for Trinity Sunday, which is today, I found it quite confusing that those three readings could be placed next to each other. One's the creation account from Genesis, the other's the account given of uh, the others, uh, Paul said to the Corinthians, and then Jesus leaves you with a word from Matthew's Gospel that he is with you until the end of the age. We went through the days of creation and we landed up with the gospel reading where Jesus says that he's with us right up until the very end of the age. And in piecing together these few readings, looking at them, I slowly began to reflect on the image, the rich imagery that's there in scripture. If you had to close your mind or your eyes and think about those days of creation and how it unfolded in the heart and mind of God and how creation out of chaos order comes into being as the created order takes shape under the guidance of God. It is under the guidance of our Lord that our lives move from chaos to order. Very often when we reflect on the very symbol of the church itself, you are seated in what's called the nave of the church, which is the, uh, 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 for many see, uh, people who uh, uh, are sailors, they would tell you that the nave in a ship is that part of the ship where people are normally gathered in the nave. And so it is a place of gathering. You are in a ship that's being steered by none other than God, none other than Jesus. And today as we gather as a Christian community, as we come into the space from a chaotic world, you and I come into the space to gather our thoughts about what it means to live in a community. When it comes to the Trinity, and we speak about God who is Father, God who is Son, and God who is the Holy Spirit, we don't separate all three, but each aspect of the Godhead is equal to us. It's an integrated understanding of God. And here, you and I find ourselves in the space looking for integration in our lives again, looking to be reintegrated again, so often in the world we hear voices which are very confusing voices. Voices that make us feel very, very unsettled about who we are. And we need to remind ourselves of our identity because our identity is rooted in God. At baptism, when you and I come uh, to the church, uh, very often you will go through a course, a baptism course that prepares parents to baptize their children in terms of, you know, and would learn what about what the sacrament is all about. The sacrament is all about your identity in God and mine. Water is used there, but the priest does a particular thing at the baptismal font. And you and I know those words so well. The priest would ask the parents to name the child. We do that very, very deliberately. Name your child. And in naming your child, you immediately become, through baptism, a child of light, a child of God, a child who represents, who mirrors <coughs> God in the world in which we live. And throughout your life, you will be reminded of that. I remember different times in my own life, 
My parents reminded me of the fact that I was named Neville and that I was baptized Neville. And every time my life became a bit fractured and fragmented, I had revisited my name. They always say, what's in a name? There is a lot in a name. Your name and my name, our name, collectively and individually matters to God. Because our whole identity is shaped by not anyone or anything else, but shaped by Him who was crucified for you and I. His life mirrored His Father's life. Our lives ought to mirror our Lord's life in the world. And how often we find it that this mirroring doesn't happen. We hear our, uh, our politicians in Parliament very often being addressed as honourable. Honourable so-and-so, honourable so-and-so. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I get very irritated when I hear that because we know that they are not behaving honourably. However, there's something to be said about that because we shouldn't drop the bar. We should never drop the standard. So in referring to them as honourable so-and-so, it, even if it's not registering in their mind, it ought to register in their mind at some point in time that they hold an honourable position. They might not be behaving in an honourable manner, but the reminder is there for them to operate as honourable leaders in our land. So Jesus reminds us constantly that he is in charge. And if he went ahead of us, he says, my peace I leave with you. My peace. So every time there are all these distortions in your life, all the fragmentation that takes part because we listen to so many other voices, come back home. Come back home to Jesus. Listen out for his voice again. And when you listen to out for his voice and you hear his voice again speak to you by name, come to him in all humility. For he is the one that went ahead of us to prepare a place for us. We can trust his voice. He is the good shepherd after all. He has never ever led us to unfavorable places. Even though we go through all our challenges in life, as the hymn writer put it so beautifully, take it all to God in prayer. Always take it to Him in prayer. So today as we celebrate the joy of the Trinity, last week we celebrated the joy of Pentecost, the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit upon His people. And prior to that we celebrated the joy of the Ascension, His uh, arrival back to his father in all his fullness. Today we focus on this triune God who comes to you, who addresses you by name, who says, you are my beloved. You are the one who I love so deeply. Come home and come home to me.